Welcome back to NYSC TV Live, everyone. I'm Kristen Schuller above the trading floor. Well, with trade underway, we are getting ready for earnings season to kick off in earnest tomorrow. Banks like JP Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo are set to report their third quarter results on Friday. So joining me now is Moshi Ornbuck. He's the managing director covering the specialty finance sector for TD Cowan. Uh, Moshi, it's great to have you on the show today. We see stocks pretty steady at the open, a little bit to the downside. But how does the performance of these big banks impact your coverage area of consumer financials? Sure. So um, the companies that I cover are all in businesses that are that are uh, you know kind of dominated even in some cases by the big banks, and so their outlook is going to be a very very important. To, uh, to the stocks that I cover, particularly J.P. Morgan, who's kind of a bellwether in most of the businesses, and their management, you know, kind of has a lot of credibility with respect to views on uh, the economy and macro issues. So I'm curious in terms of your expectations when it comes to J.P. Morgan Chase. We had Delta report earlier uh, this morning before the opening right. bell. Disappointing guidance might be hard to link the two uh, unless we're focusing on broad economic trends. Right. So absolutely. I mean, I think I think they will focus on uh, some broad economic trends. J.P. Morgan always gives some thoughts on the underlying consumer, which uh, investors tend to think you know very carefully about. In the past, J.P. Morgan has often been, um, I think, concerned about underlying uh, unrest or kind of uh, you know macroeconomic uh, uh, issues around the world. And, you know, those are at a probably a slightly higher level now than they might have been three months ago. So I think those are things that we could look to. And then specifically, they're a leader in the credit card business, and I cover a number of credit card companies. Certainly the, the, the specific trends in terms of spending volume, balance growth, and uh, losses are something that the Fed investors are going to look at. And what are your expectations this earnings season, uh, Moshi, when it comes to how consumers are spending and really the state of debt? Yeah. Yeah. So what's what's been interesting is spending growth has been decelerating um, more uh, more so at the at the lower end middle to lower end of the income spectrum than at the high end, but you're seeing some pressure kind of across the board not not material but some pressure so that's definitely out there. Interestingly enough, you know from a the repayment of debt standpoint, there the story is a little better. The high end, uh, you know, the income consumer is doing reasonably well, and even at the middle lower end. The, the pace of delinquency growth has has stabilized. Things aren't getting better yet, but at least it doesn't appear that they're getting worse. Mm -hmm. You know, higher interest rates obviously have had a big impact on the banks. Yeah. I think some might have thought traditionally that higher rates, rising rates would be a positive because of net interest income, right? Banks make money on uh, the money that they loan out and higher rates can be beneficial, but certainly uh, we've seen that have a different narrative. I'll say that uh, since the Fed started raising rates in the wake of inflation. With the Fed still expected to cut rates, how is that going to impact companies like the ones you cover? So the ones that I cover are not hugely rate sensitive. So in general, so on the one hand, first of all, lower rates will help their customers because their customers are paying, <laughs> have been paying those higher rates and have been pained by that. So I think from that standpoint, they will have a benefit from the lower rates. In terms of their earnings in general, uh, it's not a huge deal because uh, the companies that I cover don't have the big free balances that are represented by large checking account balances that a lot of the regional and large banks have. So it's not as big a deal. Some of them have modest benefits from lower rates and some have modest, you know, a, a modest uh, negative impact, but it's not generally a big deal. I'm curious, uh, your take, Moshi, we talk so much about a soft landing, right? Can the Fed engineer a soft landing? What does it mean for consumers? What does it mean for investors? Yeah. And based on the data that you're seeing in terms of spending patterns, do you think that that is possible, that the economy can avoid a recession as we see stocks still sitting near record highs? Yeah, so definitely um, is something the Fed would like to do. It seems like it's doing a decent job towards it. I think, uh, you know, it's a little bit, uh, you know, above my pay grade in terms of, you know, the, the biggest macroeconomic questions. But I would say that, you know, we do watch employment levels and employment levels have been relatively healthy. And so avoiding it does it does appear, you know, if you went back exactly a year ago, um, I think the, the market was convinced that the Fed was going to have to engineer a recession. It was going to have to uh, cut off growth enough 
and cause higher unemployment. And now we're, we're less concerned about that. Obviously, there are still risks out there that things could go the wrong way. But I think it feels like we're in a better spot. Uh, Moshi, it's great to have you on the show. Of course, we'll be watching these great. banks as the earnings season unfolds. Uh, Moshi is with TD Cowan at Banking. Thanks so much. Analyst there. Thank you.